Hello, today we will talk about Navier's Stokes equations. Finally, after several months of introducing different forces in our talk, we are ready to cast the most important equations in uh, fluid dynamics, atmospheric sciences and oceanography, the Navier Stokes equations. Navier Stokes equations are this. The second Newton's law applied to a parcel of air or any uh, fluid. Namely, we say that in second Newton's law that mass times acceleration is the sum of all forces. This simple equation is just slightly modified in uh, fluid dynamics and atmospheric sciences where we prefer this form. Namely, we say that acceleration is the sum of all forces per mass. We like to express forces per unit mass. Why is that? That's because in the case of fluid, everything is, well, fluid-like, and it is difficult to define particular mass. If I take, uh, I don't know, this pen, then it is rather easy to define the mass of this pen, and even if I break this pen in half, I can still relatively easy define the mass of this pen or two pieces uh, of the pen broken, being broken. But in the case of air, it is very difficult to define a, a particular mass of the part of air parcel because there is a lot of mixing flow and so on. And for that reason, we like to express forces per unit mass. So now, when we know all the forces that are acting on, par on a parcel of air, namely we introduced them in previous videos, and we have uh, real forces, pressure gradient force, gravitational force, viscous forces, and we have three uh, apparent forces, that would be centrifugal force, Coriolis force, and Euler force, but we said Euler force, nobody cares about it, because the angular velocity of Earth is constant, so we end up with these five forces. What we need to do now is to put down these forces in quantitative form and cast finally Navier-Stokes equations. Let's do it. The acceleration du dt is equal to first pressure gradient force, second gravity, third, viscous forces, fourth, centrifugal force, and finally, fifth, Coriolis force. Here, u is a vector of velocity measured in respect to Earth's surface, which is non-inertial frame of reference, rho is density, t is time, p is pressure, g is gravitational acceleration in vector form, nu is kinematic uh, viscosity, omega is angular velocity of the Earth, and r is the radius of the Earth. This is Navier-Stokes equation in vector form in non-inertial frame of reference. In an inertial frame of reference, the two apparent forces disappear and we end up only with uh, these uh, three terms on the right side. If we also neglect viscosity, then the pressure gradient force and gravity, together with acceleration, that's called Euler equation. So, Euler equation is the special case of Navier-Stokes equation when there is no viscosity and there are no apparent forces. This is a vector equation since we have three dimensions of space. This represents three equations in scalar form. And these three equations are voila! This is system of Navier-Stokes equations in scalar form. It's the same as the equations that we just saw, but the other one was in vector form. What do we have? First terms on the left side are 
local derivatives or what we call unsteady terms. Then we have three terms that represent advection. Advection of u velocity component in the x, y and z direction. Advection of v velocity component along the three coordinates and advection of w velocity component along the three coordinates. And notice that advection is carried out by u, v, and w. Here we have the pressure gradient force, first term on the right. Then we have gravity acting only in the vertical direction. And then we have viscous forces. I highly suggest you review viscosity in my videos on viscosity and uh, viscous stress tensor. Then we have the Coriolis force. Here I did not neglect the vertical component of the Coriolis force, which is proportional to 2 omega cosine phi in the x and uh, z direction. Usually we neglect this term. We have Coriolis force in the horizontal direction and we have two components of the centrifugal force. This one is quite often neglected, but this one is combined with gravity G to give us what we call apparent gravity. All this is individually covered in my previous videos, but now it's put together. Now, if we count, we see that unknowns are U, V, W, Rho, and P. We have five unknowns and three equations, which means that the system is incomplete. In order to close the system, we have to have additional equations, and they are usually equation of uh, mass continuity, equation of uh, state, and uh, energy equation, usually first principle of thermodynamics. All these will be covered in this channel later. But for now, I just present you Navier's Stokes equations. These are partial differential equations. As you can see, we have partial derivatives. They are nonlinear equations because function is multiply, uh, multiplying its own derivative. And they are coupled, which means that u, v, w velocities are inter interchangeably uh, occurring in all equations. We know that these equations work experimentally. However, there is no mathematical proof yet that they will give a solution in any given situation. In particular, there are three open questions related to these equations. First, purely mathematical question is the existence of solution. So let's say first is existence. We are not sure if given a unique situation, the equation will give always a solution. The second problem that is still unsolved related to these equations is the so-called uniqueness of solution. Will the solution be one and only one? In other words, if we solve the system, are we going to get multiple solutions for one initial condition? And the third unanswered question is the smoothness problem. And that problem says... Will the solution describe the fluid flow that is real? And this one turns out to be the most complicated for mathematicians. In May 2000, the Clay Mathematics Institute in New Hampshire included Navier-Stokes equations in the list of several fundamental mathematical problems that are still unsolved. The price, the prize rather, for solving these problems in one million US dollars. Out of these seven millennium problems, only one is solved, Poincar conjecture. Russian mathematician Gregory Prelman solved it and then refused the one million dollar prize. Now what I find interesting about uh, the way society runs today is if you go to a home page of one very famous search engine and you type Gabriel Stokes. You don't get Sir George Gabriel Stokes, but you get a fictional character from Walking Dead. And I find that a little bit insulting. 
Namely, that company probably has uh, running water, air conditioning, and they are earning millions and millions of dollars. That running water system, pipes, and air conditioning are designed using Navier-Stokes equations. So they indirectly earn billions of dollars thanks to scientific advancements such as this one. And yet, on the home page of their search engine, what do they put? They don't put Sir George Gabriel Stokes. They put Gabriel Stokes from Walking Dead, zombie TV show. That needs to be changed. But what can you do? Now, I would like to show you Now, at the end, let me show you some phenomena that can be explained using Navier-Stokes equations. One very important phenomena is the flow of liquids, in this case, whiskey. Cheers! Now you know Navier-Stokes equations. Enjoy the rest of the day. This is the fifth time I am recording this scene, so you count how many whiskeys. <laughs>